Loveline. It's time for Loveline. You know, there's going to be sex, drugs, rock and roll. The crowd seems to love it. Loveline. Careful, it's slippery. I had a flash. Only on 92.1 KFMA. Free Valley. Love Line is meant for an adult audience. Love Line may contain sexually oriented content. Listener discretion advised. Now, here's Love Line. 1 800 Love 191. With Dr. Drew and Adam Corolla. Hey, it's the Love Line. I'm Adam Carolla. That is Dr. Drew. Dr. Drew is a board-certified physician and addiction medicine specialist. Yay! Phone number 1-800-LOVE-191. Fax number 310-854-4455. Michael Gorgian is here tonight. You know him probably best from uh, Party of Five, where he plays uh, the part of uh, Justin. That's, yeah, right. that's right. I'm going to yep. get that straight. You know, I only can watch... Party of Five starts at 9, right? So yep. I can only watch... I watched the first like fourteen, twelve minutes. No, no, I'm I'm hanging now. <laughs> I, I don't know. I don't know if you've noticed, Drew. Before it gets depressing. Yeah, I I'll tell you. Well, I, I get to watch the show, and then they have the opening. Yeah. I don't know if this is something new. Sort of new. You know what I mean? Like like I, I was watching. Uh, was it like Ally McBeal before I left tonight? Yeah. And there were actually my girlfriend was watching Ally McBeal. Mm -hmm. I was trying to watch a uh, History Channel a documentary on MacArthur, <laughs> it was quite a conflict. But uh, the point is, is they show the beginning of the show for five minutes, and then they have the beginning, and then they have the rest of the like show. A, well, it's that's the the teaser, right? As they call it. So uh, it's like a little mini story. But I'm I'm getting bolder. I used to leave for Loveline right at nine o'clock. Right. Now I can almost squeeze in a half hour sitcom if it starts at nine. Is this a good thing? I I don't know, but I'm just telling you the way things are going. <laughs> I'm going to watch the eleven o'clock news before I leave for this place. Um, I guess you and Michael have worked together before. Oh yes, oh, we yeah. go way back. Michael oh, yeah. was regaling me with stories about your prowess in the as a thespian. Oh, yeah. Art oh, house. he just said it was just it was just classic. Uh, you you might not know from this, your work. this uh, show, but Adam is quite a, a thespian. You know, I've, uh, I've he not said something about cigar store Indian, but other than that, I think he was oh, thoroughly yeah, uh, enthralled. I've not seen this movie, uh, Art House, this very low budget movie that uh, we're both in. Well, now it's the movie's movie's fault now. I I have uh, <laughs> well, I hope it was a low budget. I don't think I got paid. And there was no air conditioning where we did it. They you gave, know, they gave me your salary. Okay. Yeah. I hope you uh, buy heroin and overdose. <laughs> I, I've done two other small movies, as you know, as well, Drew, and I've not seen either one of those. Uh, so uh, three what movies. Michael, and, what's your interpretation? Is there a reason for that? Uh, well, you know, that whole three strikes are out thing that yeah. the government does. Oh, yeah. Mm. No, I haven't, exactly. I haven't wanted to see it because, <laughs> well, you know, Drew, I have no energy. I think you ought to see it, don't you? Well, yeah. Do you have it? I think, yeah, I do have it. I'll send it to you. Oh, I'd love you to see it. You might not want to see it, though. <laughs> <laughs> How bad was I? Was I that bad? Well, well, Michael, be honest. Big, uh, that Michael, big use the same kind of language you used I didn't have Adam a script to work off of. <laughs> you don't hear either. You do fine. Yeah, but this is different. Adam, it, here's the thing. Is what? Next time somebody tells you to do a, a little independent film or something, don't do just, it. Just, no, do it. But make up the dialogue. Oh really? Yeah, make I, it up. I, I think I made up most of it. It's very rare me, yeah. that you'll you'll have an independent filmmaker who's Shakespeare. Well, I I had a whole block of dialogue to remember, and naturally I couldn't commit any of it to memory. Yes. But I tried to give the guys the bullet points. Ah. But <laughs> maybe I didn't quite even get those down. I don't know. I I've not seen it. Yeah. My instinct was when I was driving home that day. You don't want to see this. <laughs> And thank God no one else has either. Uh, trust your instincts. All right. So uh, Party of Five, which is uh, having the uh, big uh, season finale coming up. Well, let's see. It's a week mm -hmm. from this Wednesday, right? Mm -hmm. Is that when everything's uh, wrapping up? Yeah. I mean, it's the end of the TV season, isn't it? Yeah, well, I know uh, Fox. Uh, I think Fox is having its a uh, its a uh, week wrap. I mean, its yearly wrap up uh, next is, week. Is there a TV that, season anymore? Yeah, there's a TV season. Mm -hmm. But see, the thing is, is with stations like Fox and the WB, it's everything's based on a, the school schedule, like when school begins mm -hmm. and ends. Mm -hmm. But with Fox, they're kind of like a special help program. So they they don't have the same season. They go into summer school and and what is a uh, I'm getting comfortable. Let's go to calls. All right, but what is Party of Five? Is that on its like seventh, sixth, 
Six season? Easy, yeah, it must mm. be. Michael? It's all blur to me. Well, what do you think if you had to venture a guess? Five. Five? Well, I we would actually, say six. No, we actually had... I'm so out of touch with everything. Who were the, the original sort of uh, stars? From Nev... There? Nev Campbell and uh, Scott, Scott Wolf. They were on this show yeah. uh, the week the whole thing went on air, I'd yeah. say. Yeah. yeah. Neil, Which and was, I wasn't around. You were not here. No, 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 no. It's been a long good, before good five, six years. Good five, six years. All right, we'll uh, take some calls. And Amanda. Hello. You're 18. Yep. What's going on? Too bad. Um, okay. I have been going out with my boyfriend for two years, and we have a child together in... Like, four times in the past two years, I have been, like, really interested in, like, other people, just, like, for the sex factor. Have you acted on that? Um, almost. I mean, we've broken up over it a few times. Um, What's up with... The, is, is, I, I'm, I'm almost ready to get my wallet out. This early in the show. Yeah, it's a little bit... I, don't, I, don't, I left mine at home, though. Yeah. And, uh, I wear my pajamas. Uh, Thank God you told me the uh, folks from... Uh, who's here tonight? Good Morning America. Good Morning America. For Christ's sake, Drew. No, it's perfect. You're wearing pajamas. pajamas. It's, I know, it's but we have usual a whole... attire. Yeah, but Drew, why didn't you tell me last night that these guys were know, showing up? I didn't think of it. You didn't think of it. We sat here for two <laughs> hours last night and didn't yeah. breathe a word of it. Now I walk in, there's film crews everywhere, there's lights everywhere, and I'm wearing pajamas. Hey, now, now, look, here's the, here's the deal with you, Adam. If I'd said there's a national camera crew coming in here, you would have gone, you would have dressed worse. No. Yes. I mean, you, you would just to make. Yeah. You would have made it worse than this. So okay. I'd, I'd rather take my chance. You still could have. You wore a shirt me. with a collar. Well, you've you've shaved. Well, that, I mean, we're way ahead of the game here. Film something earlier today. Come so. on. All right. We're very lucky. All right. Uh, but Amanda, look. There's a couple things here. One is, you know, we know that that you've had a tough life, right? Okay. You have at 16. You get involved with a guy. You have a kid by 18. How old's the guy? Um, he's 19. And. And you're either he is not providing enough for you, or you need chaos in your life still. Well, I mean, I think you know, no matter what, you're going to be attracted to other people. I mean, that's a natural no, thing. No, but, no yeah. that's a natural thing. But to to have that mess up the relationship you're in, I mean, you know, to be open about the fact that you, to pretend like I think we better bet. No, uh, I, I don't want to gamble this early. I don't. I don't feel that much chaos coming okay, from Amanda. Don't have to gamble. You want to tell us? Um, no, I wasn't, I was, like, physically abused when I was, like, okay. old that, that, stepmother. That's what I was going to go for, actually. Is Your a... stepmother physically abused you? Yeah. That's a, a new wrinkle. She, she beat you? I mean, my sister, yeah. You and your sister? My sister was sexually abused by a next-door neighbor. Okay. Is this okay. enough chaos for you guys? Well, yeah. But why why does that turn into she's because attracted to other people? It, be, what it turns into is she picks a relatively unavailable, potentially abusive guy for her boyfriend. Oh. Okay. Uh, gets pregnant before she's uh, 18. I'm not really. He doesn't abuse me at all. He's actually a very nice guy. No, I, I'm not going along with Drew on this one. As a matter of fact, I know the, the, the crew's here and everything, but Mike, could you shut Drew's microphone off, please? <laughs> for the remainder of the show? <laughs> Thank you. Uh, that is what's going on. I am she, wait, she's wait, 18. She needs the chaos right. because what? I'm going to put it in a nutshell here. Okay. Um, Amanda grew up in a sort of chaotic environment, to say okay. the least. Stepmom was beaten on her. Mm -hmm. Sister was getting molested by the neighbor. God knows what kind of father dad was. There's a lot of chaos. My dad is a very good father. Mm -hmm. right. But well, how good you, a guy is he who, who marries somebody who beats his kids? And allows that oh, to go he, on. He never knew about it. Oh, Amanda, please. He, no, the, he didn't. I, I know, but he chose somebody who beat his kids. Right. He brought that person. He brought that person home. Like the, and and there, well, where where is your mom? What happened with her? Um, me and my mom, we lived together for. Why like, did your dad and mom split up in the first place? They were never married. Oh, okay. okay. And then your mom, my mom left the children in the hands of dad. I mean, was mom? No, she, she didn't leave us. Um, well, there was a custody battle and everything like that, and my dad won half custody, so we'd like spend a week with my dad. In a week with my mom. Okay. Well, listen. Then, Let, let's. How was the stepdad, or was there a stepdad? My stepdad. He's he's nice. He was okay. Okay. So listen, Drew, quiet down, because uh, we got to get uh, on to the next call. Amanda. Yeah. You're looking for a little chaos, and you're going to stir things up. Or you wouldn't. Your boyfriend wouldn't even know you were attracted to other people if you didn't want to stir things up a little bit. You understand? Yeah. Why does he even know you're attracted to other people? 
He doesn't. I don't tell him. He said you got in arguments over it. Well, well, yeah. Not, he he sus he's, suspects. And, he doesn't yeah. know anymore. I mean, I told him that I wouldn't do that anymore and stuff like that. Well, I do him. what? I want to be with him. Well, how does I he know? I wouldn't, like... How does he know in the first place? Because we know a guy who has friends with a really long time ago who came back into my life um, last summer. And I broke up with him for that guy. Okay, so, so nothing ever happened between me and that guy because he like left, he moved back to Florida. All right, all right, but he he knows because right. you've been doing things. Yeah. I mean, you've acted yeah. on it. Here's yeah. uh, let me get some just basic advice to Amanda. Amanda, you've got a boyfriend who seems to care about you. You've got a child with that man. Uh, think about establishing a family on behalf of that child. Certainly, going down the path you're on with the chaos that you're attempting to develop in your life and that you need that's been imprinted upon you through all those years as a child. You've got to fight against that and try to reestablish real connection with somebody, as scary as that might be. Be vulnerable. Be available in the relationship. And don't think that you're going to find happiness through some other guy or that physical contact is going to be the solution to your problem. Right. Yeah, but it, and you, it a month. you got a, I know. You got a cool ass little kid. So, yeah, but they. Well, no, I mean, you guys are too depressing. Yeah. <laughs> Come on. Well, listen. What? She's got a kid, so yeah. it's a cute kid, and so be a little bit happy. Yeah, and you got a make kid. decisions. No, that no, 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 I'm just saying. I'm just saying. I mean, you can be as down as you want to be, but hey. Come on, cheer All right. up. All right. Thank you, Michael. Hey, you know what you want you know what amazing coincidence is, Michael? But Her parents were never married. Yeah, shocking. Isn't that amazing? Amazing. It's a, it's just a You guys it, are worse than the X Files, man. Michelle? <laughs> Michelle. Yeah, hello. Michelle. Hello? Yeah. Hi. Uh, Hi. would you turn your radio down, Goofball? Yeah, call? I just did. Okay. Is it down enough? Yes it is. Well turn it all the way down, please. All the way down, please. You're nineteen. What's going on? Well, I was with this guy for three years. And I cheated on him with a girl, and he found out, so we broke up. And now I'm living with that girl, and everything's, now we're doing good. Well, now I've heard, and she has suspicions, too, that he's trying to hook up with her. And I don't know if he'd be okay with all, you know, all three of us getting our groove on, or if he just wants it to her and him, or I don't, I don't know I'm what I'm sure he do. could live with that scenario. Well, I don't know how to, like, approach it. I mean, how should I, should I just... Listen, you don't have to skirt around the threesome issue with a guy. It's not like asking Dad to borrow his car or anything. No, no it is because he said it was gross. When we were going out, I Oh, I'm sure he doesn't. Good angle. Gross. And he said that, no, I don't like that. And now well, I don't Maybe know. he doesn't, though. Look, well, of course he has to say that to you, too, by the way. I mean, True. when he's your boyfriend. Right. All right, so you're still the, you're together with this girl, right? Right. I and, live with her. Yeah. Now, explain the part about her thinking he's coming on to her like he would he, he comes over we still talk to his friends and anything he comes over and like if i leave the room he's kind of like real touchy with her like joking and having to touch her or something just yeah. little things like that so so she thinks he likes her and she's bi too right and, and what do you think this will do to your relationship with her oh i we've done it before with other guys i mean it really hasn't Really? That's how we prefer it. Uh, listen, listen oh boy. do you understand that these right. kinds of this kind of stuff just keeps you out of intimacy, <laughs> right? It, yeah. It doesn't let you really have a relationship because it's right. all based in these these uh, very intense sort of physical, bizarre physical encounters that substitute for any real emotional connection. So right. hold on, right? Girl. Okay. Right, okay. But you two just go out and pick up guys? No, no. I mean, it's oh, only sorry. been a couple well, times. Paint, paint Michelle's past for us. I don't, <laughs> I don't, I don't want to like, do that. We've only done like a couple times, and we liked it. And we like just, you know, doing it with each other, too, but... Where do you find the guys? Just anywhere. <laughs> That's the beauty. <laughs> I, Adam wants to know. I, I, that's what I mean. I mean, do you go out and, and recruit friends, or do you go out to a club or something? No, friends. Oh, okay. Like, like just yeah, just friends. All right. Well, have another one. No, no, wait a minute. Go ahead. This is this is going to decay into disaster. It doesn't matter. You, are you, Michelle? You, can, you Michelle, this relationship's what, what, kind of screwed the whole anyway. A mess. What, so, so what? Who cares? What other, what other chaos going on in your life? Are you a stripper or something too? No. Do you do drugs? Anything like that? No. Well, yeah, a little. What drugs are you doing? I smoke marijuana. Every day? No. No. Every once in a great while. Wait, how do you support yourself? I have a job. What do you do for a living? I work at a bank. Bank. That's frightening. Bank, it's all about... Is there anything you want to tell us about your past to help us understand where all this chaos come from? Um, chaos, I don't know. Um, I was molested okay. when I was younger. There, there, you, there go. you go. There it's it. <laughs>
Yeah, we don't. We I, I I know everyone gives us a load of crap for this, but we just don't find we people that are willing to do that much sexual experimentation without being a lab rat. It, would you shut up? And let me finish my goddamn sentence, Drew. Finish. Without being a lab rat at some point in their life. Yeah. Unfortunately, you know, six or seven. And the people that study sexual compulsions and sexual addictions have a lot to say about this. I mean, that's where they come from. They get sort of hardwired into the brain as a result of these intense traumas of childhood. And then when puberty hits, they sexualize those traumas in ways to try to solve that old biology. And it never works. They never get enough. They never have enough chaos. More guys, more women, whatever. Right. And it, it lends to a lot of shame, a lot of unhappiness. All right. But she's living this sort of uh, lesbian lie. She's got a crazy friend. I'll just have a bunch of uh, sex for a while, and then you'll burn out, and then get into therapy later. You know what I'm saying? Yes, I know what you're saying. Okay. <laughs> Michael, you with me? Uh, yeah, I'm with you. Thank you. <laughs> Drew, the clock fell off the wall, and it's really confusing to me now. Paco. Hey, what's up, guys? You're 20. What's going on? Uh, not I, much. Man. I got a clock here, Drew, I uh, guess. Yeah, I guess. We just realized that. <laughs> <laughs> Paco, what's going on there? Hey, not much, man. Um, Actually, let me get to... Well, let me say, uh, y'all two dudes are great. All right? Y'all have helped me out a lot, and relationships with my girlfriend made everything cool. All right. Um, and understanding her, at least, right? Yeah. Okay. So, anyways, here's my question. All right, see, I was wondering if, uh, if a girl could give a guy a yeast infection without her actually having a yeast infection herself? Uh, no, and guys don't typically get yeast infections. Well, I mean, I know that I know that they do, but I didn't know. Anyways, there's there's a bump down uh Yeast infections are not bumps. Okay, well, it's not it's just one little bump, you know. Yeast infections are not bumps. <laughs> okay. I know you don't want to acknowledge what you have, but uh, is it a blister? <laughs> no, it's not even a blister. It feels like maybe like an ingrown hair. Hold on a second. Paco, uh, <laughs> Paco first should convince himself he got a yeast infection from someone who didn't have a yeast infection. Right. That was number right. one. <laughs> then he decided that it sort of manifests itself in bumps when the yeast infection does not manifest itself that well, it's way. It's not really a bump then. <laughs> well, wait a minute. There's only one. <laughs> All right, let's just let's just go along with Paco okay. here. You got a pretty bad yeast infection there with that one bump from that chick who doesn't have a yeast infection, Paco. No, 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 you I may was, be in trouble. Is it like an ingrown? Hold hair? on, let this be a lesson to you. Do not sleep with chicks who don't have yeast infections. <laughs> You're going to pick up a yeast infection, right, Drew? <laughs> Same with AIDS, right? Right on. Yeah. And in hepatitis, right? Yeah. People that don't have it typically transmit it. Those right? are the carriers, the uh, silent yeah. carriers, the forgotten uh, carriers. Oh yes. Didn't know that. Uh, Paco, it, it, could it be an ingrown hair? I mean, it could be, but see, here's the thing. Like, there was one bump before. I mean, and I mean, it's always after we like have sex that this thing will pop up, you know. Yeah. And I'm always protected. And you it's know? not a blister, and it doesn't ulcerate. No, it doesn't. I mean, it kind of it kind of hurts, like if you push on it. You and know? where is it? Where is it? Okay. It's like right right on my pelvic bone, not necessarily on my schlong itself, but like. Uh huh. Right. Yeah, interesting because he put the condom on. Yeah. So it's nothing mm -hmm. on is the it, penis. Yeah. Uh, it probably is just a little like a zit, an ingrown hair. There's something yeah. called molluscum contagiosum, too, that can look like a zit, but it usually doesn't hurt. So. Right. Well, I got an appointment with my doc. I just wanted to ask Yeah, that. Yeah, don't worry about it. But it doesn't sound like anything you should be concerned about. But I'll tell you what, um, time and again, uh, how, how badly do we fail at getting information about skin lesions? And people cannot describe them in a way that I can understand what they're talking about. Well, so. he said he had a bump on his penis, well, and then well, it turned out to be a bump on his fact, pubic yeah, bone. I, well, I like best. What? You have a fax, right? Yeah, but no, they people have lesions now. <laughs> people have a Xerox <laughs> machine. Uh, yeah. um, what I like is people always call up with the diagnosis. Yeah. <laughs> That's what they start with. I think what, I have a yeast infection. Yeah, here's what I have. Uh, yeah, an airborne uh, yeast infection. Uh, it's on my eyebrow. Danny. Hi. Okay. You're 16. Yeah. What's going on? Um, okay, um, it started about last year. Um, I met this girl, and I, like, totally hated her, right? Mm -hmm. And then, like, like the next year, this year, um, I started to like her. And this, like, eventually turned into love. And um, so, like, after a while, like, I like, like started liking her. We got together. Um, after we got together, about two weeks later, like, not, like, we were together for, like, nothing at all, um, we broke up even though I still loved her. And then we start, we stopped talking, and um, I guess during that time we we, were, we stopped talking, um, she got a boyfriend, an 18-year-old boyfriend. And, she, and the oh, question is, this is confusing. what's the question? Oh, um, I want to know like, why she's like playing me like this, because it's been like back and forth that like she's just like... Because she... Here's the deal. 
uh, she feels vulnerable if she gets involved with one person. So one way to sort of uh, stay safe is to have somebody in the bullpen constantly, lest the relationship that she's trying to develop doesn't work out. It's, it's, it's cheating herself. It's treating both of you. It's unfair. Call her on it. And it's something people do. It's not as though she's a despicable person. People, particularly around your age, will sort of, they're afraid to be completely involved in a relationship or vulnerable in that way. And so they'll, no. they'll kind of date a couple of people. And, uh, I could never do that. I'm shocked. I've never done it my whole life. That whole lineup, that's a chick thing. Yeah. Women do that. They they make sure there's somebody at work. They know who likes them. They they make sure they have another guy lined up, someone on deck, just in case uh, the worst happens, and they'll wave that next guy in. It's always at work, isn't it? it it's usually at work, yeah. And we, the reason guys would do it, it's just they can't do it. <laughs> Women can do it. Women can sniff. I've had a few girlfriends do this to me. They'll sniff around the office, and they'll find some guy who they know likes them and women can tell and guys are pretty transparent especially uh, at the workplace especially young men and then yeah. they'll keep the guy in a little bit of a holding pattern <laughs> become good friends they'll become friends they'll do a little office party once in a while but they'll keep the guy in a little bit of a holding pattern and then they'll see how the relationship's going with you but if you two break up mysteriously she'll start going out with Stu from work almost then that day and then when you c confront her on it, she'll say, no, no, no. We never did anything. I, we never cheated on you. It wasn't until after we broke up. We had no intention of. But she'll never admit that she had him in a sort of a holding pattern. And he was just he was just waiting, just waiting to make his move. Right, Drew? Yeah. Women are diabolical. Have we learned that? Yep. Okay. <laughs> Drew, try to talk in the microphone every once in a while, would you please? Once in a while. All right. Uh, Michael Gorgian is here. He is from uh, Party 5, and uh, we got a movie of his to uh, plug as well. We'll uh, get into that, get into uh, what's wrong with Drew, and uh, more calls all after this. <laughs> Campbell, and you're listening to Love Line with Adam Carolla and Dr. Drew. Neat. Yes, you is. Michael Gorgian is here from Party of Five, Fox, Wednesday nights, 9 o'clock. He also uh, has himself a uh, Emmy Award. Hmm. Guess who we beat out for this uh, Emmy Award here, Drew? I can't guess. Alan Alda, hmm. Richard Gere, wow. Matthew Broderick, and Sir Ian McKellen. Uh, I mean, not in the same year and everything, but I think they were nominated in other years. But these guys were all nominated and lost at one point. No. Sure. No, I'm, ju I'm just kidding. I'm just screwing with Drew. Beat all those guys out? That's amazing. Thank you. That is pretty damn good. He was in uh, Leaving Las Vegas and uh, Newsies, which I haven't heard of uh, in a while. But it was a movie that, for that some reason, first job. everyone decided there, were, there, was, um, there was a TV show that everyone made fun of. That was Hello, Larry. Remember? Yeah. Like, like it was like the, the comedy punchline through the 70s and 80s. Yeah. You know, like you'd yell, like, right. like if there's some writer or something that wasn't funny, you'd go, right. what's he doing now? I don't know. He's punching up scripts for Hello, Larry. Right. A, and Newsies <laughs> was the film version of that, although I never saw it. So, so I don't know. If it, yeah. No, you know what? I made a I made my own film while we were shooting it called Blood Drips on Newsy Square. <laughs> and it was a, a horror film. And I got everybody in the cast to be in it. Really? Uh, yeah, I got uh, Bill Pullman's in it and Michael Lerner. Who, were those guys all newsies? Yeah. That was a big Disney yeah, a musical. Big, they were trying to bring really? back the musical. Yeah. It was... Uh, now, you you just jump in. I'll, I'll see how, how good my memory is. But I'm looking mid-80s. It's like pre-Michael no. Early? Uh, Late early, 80s? early 90s. Oh, yep. newsies was yeah. early 90s? 90, I I, it was my first job. I think it was 91. Really? Mm -hmm. Mike, look that up on the internet, would you please? Can't be 91. Yeah. Anyway, it was a, it was a uh, Disney, kind of had it on, like a little bit of an Oliver Twist kind of feel to it, musical, and you never heard of it? Never. And it turned out to be a big bus, but I don't know why. Well, what was yeah, it a well, bus for? I think it was a bus mostly because of, uh, you know, people just don't buy it. It was a traditional musical, um, and I don't think people buy into uh, characters busting into song all of a sudden. Yeah. And that's working now. Well, you not have to the be movies. A cartoon. No, you have to be a cartoon. Yeah. Yeah. Woody Allen did it. Well, or you have of. to be a spoof. Yeah. Um, Little Shop of Horrors worked. Yeah. Did you do any singing? You did. You sung in it. Uh huh. How'd that go? 
About as good as your acting. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> You're excellent, then. Yeah. Thank you, wise ass. Mike, find out when that news he was on, please. Eric. Uh, hi. You're 17. Yeah. What's going on? Um, lots. I, um, I have a really weird life right now. Oh, I, yeah. um, I have three girlfriends, and uh, one of them has a very bad drug problem. Do they know about each other? Um, no. Do they know you're dating anyone other than them? Um, one of them knows, the other two don't. You're 17, you have three girlfriends? Yeah, I've actually, I've been, I've had multiple girlfriends ever since I was 14, so. Are you a drug addict? No, I've never done anything in my whole life. Are you having sex with all three of them? Um, two of them, and one of them has really prodded me to take a virginity, and, I'm, and I won't do it. Oh, you son of a bitch. Do you think this is right? Um, well, one of them knows about the other one, and she says as long as I stay protected, it's fine. She's the heroin addict? No, no, no. The the, the drug addict is the other one that doesn't know. Mm. And I got a feeling that if she did know, she wouldn't care. Yeah. But she just recently started taking drugs um, a few weeks ago and is already completely addicted to um, to crack. And um, she's like, that's all she does now. Maybe if you guys uh, start singing, it'll get better. Can you do that? Uh, I suck. I oh, okay. But, uh, Eric, everybody sounds kind of disturbed in, in your world there. Huh? <laughs> yeah. Uh, right. How old are these girls? Um, well, uh, one of them is 17, the other one is 17, and the other one is 15. Do you go to school? Huh? Do you go to school? If he said the last one was 17, I would have punched him. <laughs> <laughs> no, the, the, you, the last one that's you go to, 15 is the one that wants me to take a virginity. Yeah. Do you go to school? Um, I graduated when I was 12. From what? Junior high school. No, the seventh grade. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> From high school. I, I've been um, in college, actually. Really? How do you graduate at 12? Well, Are you respondents. A, hold on. I'm, I'm, hold on. i got to figure something out here because I'm getting a weird read here. There's a lot of information we got to get out of this guy. Eric, this now the o we all know the only one who graduates high school at 12 are Asian kids, but Asian kids don't get that much tail. So I'm really confused here ethnically as to what's going on here. That's uh, bionic. Eric? Yeah. What's your ethnicity? <laughs> I hope this doesn't turn into a racist thing. Well, I just got, I got to find out because now, now I'm really screwed up. I'm, uh, I'm Dutch, Irish, and German. Mm -hmm. Yeah, okay, that's good for the tail, but uh, not the graduating early part. What co what kind of college are you in now? Um, I'm in a uh, I'm in UK in uh, you Lexington, to, University of Kentucky. Yeah. And what are you studying? Um, engineering. How? Wow. How come you're not uh, socializing with college kids? Um, because basically I'm younger than all of the college kids. So and, you uh, meet people at the high schools or? Oh, I mean, these are people that I've known for a few years. I mean, you know, wait a minute. If you graduated high school at 12, shouldn't you be done with college? I didn't go until this year, actually. What did you do all those years in between? Um, just basically studied and and uh, prepared myself for college. At home? Um, yeah. With my mom is a, was a professor at UK for uh, 20 years. Okay. So yeah. she's, uh, she's a pretty good teacher. Well, what else going on in your life? Um... Um, not much. I mean, I, I really, you know, am working and going to college. And, but but uh, you said your life's real weird right now. Is it just about the relationships? Well, I mean, I've lost two friends recently. To what? Um, one of them, I had to, um, I had to take her to Charter Hospital because she had overdosed. Right. And uh, after she, you know, after she got out of the hospital for the overdose, she started right back up on the drugs. So and she died. Um, no, she. I had to take her to charter to get her off of the drugs. Okay, and the other one? And the other one, he um, mm -hmm. turned out to um, start sending pornographic mail to the 15-year-old girl, and um, uh, it was just, you know, it was it was wrong. And I told him that, you know, he wasn't my friend. So no. you you ended two relationships because of the the behaviors and the circumstances, right? Yeah, and it, I mean the one the one guy who was. Well, let me just ask you, where's your dad? My dad? Yeah. Um, he's with me. He's been home with me all my life. And wh wh where did you get, the, you know, for lack of a better term for all this, where did you become such a great codependent? Even though you had reasonable capacity to set limits with some of these people, you seem to get involved with people that need an awful lot of fixing and rescuing. Um, I guess since I was 14, 
I mean, that was the first time that I ever um, that I ever had. I don't understand the question I'm asking. Uh, you ask him. I, mean, I ask him, nobody wants to answer him. Why, why, why is everyone around you a project? Who did you have to prop up at home? You know what I mean? You have some sister with polio. Was your uh, dad you know, alcoholic? Alcoholic. Was something going on at home? So you had to take care of people. No, I never. No, had, nothing never, like that. Never had. All right, then knock it off. I, I can't talk to them all night. You got three chicks. You're 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 banging two and a half of them. Yeah, they're they're high on drugs. You sound like he sounds like he's he been sounds, to Vietnam. He sounds depressed. He's done like yeah. four tours at Vietnam. Yeah. Yeah. Eric, uh, you need a little therapy. You're depressed. And I'll tell you, if you stopped hanging around with all those uh, drug addicts and screwballs, it might help you a little bit in terms yeah, of your and demeanor. I think something, something, some exploitative something went on with yeah. him, with his parents. What were you guys looking at? Why, was, why would you say he's codependent? Uh, he's, all his friends are drug yeah, addicts. He's I mean, taken everyone to everyone to rehab and stuff. Yeah, I mean, he's real involved. So, you, so that stems back to something that... So usually, I mean, the classic pattern would be an alcoholic or addict parent or some parent that, that needed to. needed propping up, he needed to be responsible for. It might be, I mean, a, a, a sort of uncommon scenario, that would be mom really was exploitative and intrusive. Well, look at this. Yeah, and, he he and graduated. Made him into, yeah, yeah well, made him into this thing, yeah. and uh, he never really developed Mom gets him out of high school at 12 and has him kick around uh, the living room for four years. Years. That's kind of weird. He, he, you know what I'm saying? That's what I'm saying. And, and so, and he never really develops a full sense of himself, and his only way he experiences himself is by fixing other people and being involved with these people. That he, he so that's probably why he's in three relationships. We, he he's bad, but it's, it's three all relationships. Yeah. All right. So what's he got to do? Knock it off. I agree with you. Okay. If you, if you get a real relationship with somebody who's not a project. That's it. Johnny? If you can't do that, then that is time for therapy. Uh. I, uh, you know, you know, I, I feel sorry for depressed people, but it's always like horrible radio. So, how old are your three girlfriends? Uh, one of them. I thought Eric was a, I thought Eric was <laughs> like, intriguing. Though. Yeah, but <laughs> listen, if two of them are seven, I, he was like, first one seventeen, the other one, second one, seventeen. <laughs> It's like it's like talking to goddamn Johnny Cash at seventeen, you know. It's like, yeah, and, and I want to kick him. It's like uh, the third one. If he said seventeen, I was going to go insane. Okay, cheer up, buddy. You got your whole life. Oh, that'll work. <laughs> yeah. yeah. At least he's not. He uh, himself is not an addict, which would really. Have... All right. I don't know what to say, John. Uh, how sorry can I feel for a guy who's got three chicks at seventeen, Johnny? Yeah. You're twenty three. Yeah. Uh, listen, I'm, I'm 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 I can't cope with this emotionally right now. Hold on a second. Uh oh. Oh, no, no, for Christ's sake. There you go. Hold on there, Johnny. I have to talk to someone who had a cup of coffee, at, at least in the 90s. I, I'm, I'm sorry. I know you people have problems, but I, I, can, I cannot talk to people who just down a handful of quaaludes. Sarah? Hi. You're 15. Yeah. All right. What's going on there, Spunky? Yeah. Spunky? <laughs> no, um, um, I just, like, recently joined the football team for my school. And I'm like, oh, yeah. yeah, I'm like one of the very first girls ever to be on the football team. Wow. And yeah, so it's pretty funny. What do you do on the football team? What do I do? Well, they really haven't put me in a position yet, but it's sort of like, um, like if you go to the practices for the football team, then you're on the football team. So. Are you getting hurt at all? Is it, is it working okay? Oh, yeah, I'm fine. Have you played before? Is that why you're... Yeah, I've played, but it's more of that, that power puff crap. Uh -huh. Um, are you a big gal? I'm a, oh no. You fast? Uh, I'm only like like five six and like hundred and thirty. Wow. Mm. Do you have wheels? Yeah, no, but you see the thing is that I can throw and I can catch. Right. <laughs> and I can run fast. Oh no. <laughs> <laughs> What's wrong with that? They're not gonna. You're not playing quarterback. You gotta learn to kick, honey. Maybe she could. Well, maybe she could receiver. There's positions uh, on the no. team for me. What's that? There's positions on the team for me. Like a defensive back or something. I don't know. She's 15. It's like a junior what? junior varsity uh, thing, you know. Okay, but Sarah. Yes. Listen, I I know we we live in a society where we're supposed to applaud everything, but this really sounds like a horrible idea. No. Yeah, she, she likes does. it. It's not a horrible idea. Like what was it? What if she was a you know a five foot three, hundred and ninety pound guy? We say, hey, don't do it. No, 190 pound. I'm no, putting 90 him in pounds, nose tackle. 90 pound guy. No, yeah, well, he, he'd have to be exceptionally fast, or I'd tell him not to All do right. it. Catch, Aaron <laughs> catch. He just wants to. Ha he wants to put, put out his best effort. Right. Well, I'm actually surprised at you, Adam. I mean, that you'd be like that, like you'd be acting like this because all the guys on the football team like totally support me and they accept me. And well, do you, do you go to a private school or a small school? Oh no, I go to like public school. Wow. What what city? Uh huh. 
Really? Wow. They're it, very it, I don't know. It just feels like a publicity stunt to me. She's into it. No. Okay. All right, take it. We gotta take a break. Okay. okay. You, you want to play though? Yeah. Yeah. So you've never played before. Oh yeah, I have played. Not like on the team though. Powder puff, she said. Okay. Uh, All right. We'll right, score a touchdown. Right, hold, hold on a second, there. We'll uh, we'll talk to you when we come back, trying All to right. uh, figure okay. out what position to put you in after this. Uh, oh yeah. Hi, this is Ariana Huffington, and you are listening to Love Line with Adam Carolla and Dr. Drew. Michael Gorgian is here tonight from Party of Five. Hello. It's a little uh, Fox show. You may have heard of it. Wednesday nights, uh, 9 o'clock. Who plays Justin? And it's the uh, best Very light-hearted show. And romantic interest of opposite Nev Campbell's. Julia. Drew, do you know that? No. Okay. Phone number 1 800 LVE 191. Fax number 310 4455 is a love line. And when we left off, we're speaking to Sarah. Sarah's uh, 15. 5'6", 130 pounds, playing on the uh, boys' football team in uh, high school. And I know I sounded like a bit of a jackass telling her to knock it off, but I, I don't know. I, I kind of feel that way. I can't, I can't help it. Why? Because it's, to me, I, you know what I hate in life? Mm. I hate the, uh, I, I, I hate symbolic stuff. Right. I don't like, like, 10Ks where they have walk a th walk a walk along right, still. Right. It's like, yeah. you know, like, if you can't jog for five miles, stay the F home. Yeah. And, and I don't like when celebrities run the first uh, 200 feet of some kind of marathon and then drop off just so you can see them get yeah, started. I, I, there's too much well, bizarre symbolism going I, I on in this saying, country. And there's too much, you know, I like guys being guys and playing football and chicks uh, cheerleading, and that's fine with me. But Sarah does not seem like she has any sort of symbolic No, uh, she doesn't seem angry. Yeah, she just likes She doesn't to play seem ball. like she's got a, a bad demeanor or yeah. anything, yeah. and if she could kick a field goal 45 yards or run a 40 and, you know, 4-7, I'd say more power to her. Right. But she's just going to go out to the team and sit on the bench. And that could be yeah, well, valuable to her. Yeah. All right. All right. That's, All what, right. that's, that's what high school football is supposed to be, right? No, it's not. Sarah. <laughs> so, what well, was the I'd question? I'd like to add that I was on the wrestling team, too. Oh. Uh -oh. Well, that <laughs> seems a little weird. <laughs> With the guys? Huh? Oh no, I don't. I don't wrestle with the guys. There's okay. other girls from um, right. other high schools. Okay. That they have a girls' wrestling team. Well, There's not officially, and... but I was put on the team and I'd wrestle with other girls. And what was your name? Like glitter or star stardust <laughs> or something? No. Well, really? What kind of wrestling? It's just huh? No nickname. <laughs> no. Yeah. no. You didn't wear a kilt or anything. No. What, <laughs> Sarah, what the what? hell is going on Sarah, with high school what? sports? What was your question? My question yeah. is about acid. All right. Um, I've only done acid once. Yeah. And, um, Don't do it, it while you're like... playing football. Huh? Don't do it while you're playing football. Oh, yeah. thank you very much. Yeah. <laughs> um, but I only did it once, and it was like one of the worst experiences I've ever had is like... Hallelujah. God bless the bad trip. Because, <laughs> really, because... Uh, it doesn't put you at any added risk for any adverse problem, mm -hmm. and it is the people who like the drug a lot, who use it over and over again, that have the chronic, chronic, severe injuries that result from this drug. But what's your question about it? Well, I hated it, but um, the thing is, like, for football, I have to take a physical. Yeah. And, um... That will not turn up. They won't? It will not turn up. Guaranteed. They won't even test for that. Unless they cut like your hair. Three months ago. Even then, they won't test for it. You'll be huh? fine. Sarah, you're fine. They will not yeah, test yeah, for I, it. I, I, and and if they drug, did, it wouldn't show up. Do you do up. drug tests uh, when you I, get a they, physical? They, not necessarily, but maybe at the high school football level. I don't know. But uh, they certainly, on routine urine screens, LSD is not one of the deals on there. So well, she, was on the, she was on the boys' wrestling team, but they found a uh, chick for her to wrestle. Like, they didn't have a girls' wrestling team, right. but they just drummed them up. Hey, you think you're bad, honey? Put down those pom-poms. Get out here. Wow. My high school didn't even have a wrestling team. Didn't have a soccer team? That was a crappy school. Trisha? Yeah? You're 23? Yes, I am. Uh -huh. Hi, everybody. Hi. Trisha? Um, yeah, so I heard you guys talking about the Newsies thing. Yeah. I saw, I've, like, seen that movie so many times. What year was that? Oh, that couldn't it, have been 91. About? What is it about? I thought it was, like, 92. Well, uh -oh. Shows a release date of 92 on the internet. No. Yeah, see? What was I it about? Have, all wrong. It's about... Like this news, the, like... Yeah, it's what? about the, William Randolph Hearst and, uh, and Pulitzer... Uh, 
about the first strike uh, of a child's union. I see. And they dramatized it in music. Beautiful and dance. <laughs> Oh, yes. Yeah. It was so cute. <laughs> okay. What's yes. up, Trisha? Um, well, I just wanted to know what part Michael played. Were you like a, were you just like a background sort of singer dancer? I was cute? Skittery. That was my name. I was basically a dancer. Oh. Skittery. Skittery. Yeah. Okay. That's, that's all. That's it. All right. All right thanks. Bye. Thanks, Trisha. Uh, to me, news, he's felt like I was 20 years old. Yeah, it sounds like one of these things that's going to resurrect someday and be considered a classic and yet uh, uh, yeah. and a failure in its no, time. Let me think about that. Mm. There's a big, on the no. internet, there's a big, no. like, these fanatical fans. Really? Yeah. Well, you um, know, he, he, let me give you my take on this uh, phenomenon, the newsy phenomenon. Yeah, please. That we're spearheading, by the way. <laughs> the resurrection of yeah, newsy. i got to talk to you about something. Okay. Any, I hope it's not embarrassing, it's for prevent, Christ's sake. Prevent, prevent. Everything... Um, Whatever you come out with, no matter how bad it is, not that Newsies was bad, but let's just say for the argu sake of argument, maybe it was, it's a Disney movie, and you got a ton of kids between the age of 8 and 12 that are going to go see Newsies, maybe 6 and 13 that are going to go see Newsies. And there's a thing about when you're 6 years old or 9 years old, you, I thought bed knobs and broomsticks yeah. was the greatest cinematic triumph of the 20th century. <laughs> yeah. I, I really did. I gave it like uh, like uh, three, two thumbs and uh, one of my mom's nipples up. Yeah, I was all about so, Grease 2. If anyone wants to Michelle talk to me Robert. about bed knobs and broomsticks, I'll tell you this was a huge movie and, a, and, and, and quite, uh, I mean, what's her name from uh, Murder, Angela she wrote? Lansbury. Angela Lansbury, Lansbury. stunning, amazing. What a yeah. Oscar caliber performance she turned. She was snubbed that year. <laughs> <laughs> the point is, is when these people now sort of turn into 19 and 20 and 21 year olds, they're going to look back on this movie and think, hey, this was great. Right, right, right. Because they were nine, and right. just as long as they don't see it again, which they, mm -hmm. for some reason, never do. I never wanted to see Bed Knobs and Broomsticks again. You, wait, do you have kids? You just think just it's like, an excellent movie. You, you will memorize all the songs like I have. Oh. Hey, but listen, uh, Walmart has decided not to sell Prevent. Really? What's yes. Prevent? Morning After Pill. And I went. I spent the day doing a bunch of research on this, and because uh, I cannot understand where the controversy is coming from. To my reading of the science, this the morning after pill works mm -hmm. by suppressing ovulation. Period. The question of whether or not it allows conception is what has caused the. Uh -huh. There's a sort of a right to life pharmacy group, which I'm a right to lifer basically. Uh, has taken the position that uh, this is uh, this is an abortifacient, and it causes abortion, it allows for, it allows conception, which to my reading it does not. Hmm. And now a, a giant pharmacy chain is not going to carry that drug. That is interfering with, say, my ability or any physician's ability to prescribe medication. Well, it's bizarre. Okay, I have a couple of quick thoughts on that. A, I hope uh, some unwanted kids are born to some strung out teenagers, uh, grow up, uh, get themselves a uh, pistol that they, they sell at Walmart and blow away uh, some of the executives or their, or their family that uh, makes this decision. That's, that's ultimate justice, first off. Secondly, it the, proves the point I was explaining to you a couple of years, a couple of months ago, which is, well, maybe it was just a couple of weeks ago. Uh, that these people aren't really interested in life and what's right and what's wrong. They're interested in flapping the pussy mouths. Do you understand? They want to complain. Yeah. Do you, do you know what I'm saying, Drew? Under think about the people that complain. Yeah. I'll include myself in this group. Yes. <laughs> I will complain about anything. Yes, indeed. You and are. I will. I will shout it from the mountaintop. Right. But. It doesn't mean I, it's any more important or any less important than anything else. But why this? I mean, it, it is so... It's because not it's an opportunity yeah, exactly. for religious whack jobs to shoot their traps off. Yeah, I'm not even sure it's a religious thing. But, okay, but here's what I'm saying. Oh, yes. Drew, let me explain. You have a group of idiots who love to write letters and they love to complain. Yes. Okay. It scares the crap out of Walmart. They look for excuses yeah. to complain. Yeah. Now, if someone's having an abortion, they're going to complain about that. And if someone wants to take RU-486 and induce an abortion, they're going to complain about that. Yeah, but when this, you isn't, come, this I, isn't that. They're not interested in what makes sense, Drew. They're interested in complaining. This is a nice, ripe opportunity to do some but, more but of their where, belly aching, which they're champions but at. But you understand why we had such difficulty understanding why there's any issues about this? It's 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 it is a question mark on does it of maybe conception. cause a conception and 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 I'll not allow uh, implantation, which again I, I in my heart of heart believes it does not. Well, no. listen, if uh, 
Hey, they should they should worry about the pill and, and the condom for that matter. Yeah, too. Well, that, see, that, to be totally consistent, you have to, right? Well, and, and yeah, that's a different argument. They're that's not a, interested in logic, and they're not interested in consistency. They're interested in shooting. They're, they're, look, let me explain who we're dealing with. Big ass broads from the Midwest and their <laughs> toupee wearing comb over fifty five year old uh, no husbands that are scared assless of them, writing letters and marching. That's what we're talking about. I don't Please, know. have you ever I don't know who the hell we're talking about? Life? Frankly, I've never talked to anybody that really would take a strong position on this because eh, nobody understands it. Right. Uh, okay. All right. Uh, listen, I this country and uh, Michael, I know you're you're an artiste and you would agree with this. We listen way too much to, to way few few too many people. I was doing an interview the with a TV people, right? guide today yeah. and uh, about uh, this other show I'm doing, The Man Show, and they're like, well, uh, uh, do you expect to get a letter on it? I said, who the hell cares? Well, what? Well, who cares? Get a well, you letter may, on it. You may get a letter. Someone may protest. Someone oh. may be upset. I was like, hey, tell them in advance to kiss my hairy ass. <laughs> what do I care? Why? Why did t- you know? Why does Walmart care? So a couple of fat broads don't go in there and buy their feminine product products w- one week. You know what I mean? Well, why I, can't I, they do what's right? Yeah, please, that's the question right there. Okay. Right. And and please, now, you, we've talked about how fat people are disparaged and discriminated against. Well, these women are all clearly overweight. I mean, that's that. I have st- statistics to back me up on that, Drew. Please, you know what I'm saying. Good looking, good looking women don't Go complain. You know why they don't complain? They're out dancing, and getting laid, and drinking. They're being courted all the time. They don't have time to write letters. They can't even spell good-looking women. Okay, Descartes, let's go to break. <laughs> True. All right. Now, wait, what are we doing here with We're the going to break. Good, good, good morning uh, today? Michael's with us till 1120, and then uh, Judy Mueller from ABC News is going to come on after that. That's right. And what are we going to talk about? You? The questions. Let no, keep just She'll be the guest on the Oh, okay. Time, so. All right. Just getting lined out. We'll be back. The phone number for Love Line is 1 800 Love 191. Love Line will be right back. Getting water in a sea of retarded sexuality. Love Line. Exclusively on Two Songs to Rock. 92.1 KFMA. <laughs> Line. We'll take our 10-second station identification uh, time out here at the top of the hour, like we always do, and we'll be back with more Love Line in just 10 seconds. This is Love Line on Radio Station. It is Loveline. We are back. Dr. Drew is over there. I'm Adam. I'm over here. Michael Gorgian is here tonight from Party of Five. That'd be Fox Wednesdays, uh, 9 o'clock. A uh, big uh, season-ending episode. Not uh, this Wednesday, but I think it's uh, a week from uh, that Wednesday. And uh, wait a minute. No, it's this Wednesday. Is it this Wednesday? Yeah. This the last one? Yeah. Oh. After month. Yeah. I didn't know that. Yeah. I thought it was a week from. All right. I'm in pain. Where do you shoot that? Uh, Sony, right down the block. Oh, all right. Cross street. Yeah, because uh, Michael was saying he lived in San Francisco, the, or Oakland. Oakland. Right. The uh, show's in San Francisco. Right. But they shoot down here. Yeah, I sort of figured that, but I yeah. thought somehow yeah. maybe they could do something at the wharf or something uh, where you could go home. Believe me, I try my best to get them to... Does it make any difference? I mean, the thing could be in Baltimore, it wouldn't make a difference? Mm-mm. No. They basically do one day every year, or one... I think week they go up there and they shoot a bunch of stuff for the whole season. Right. And but then, the, the cast and everything goes yeah. up. Okay. Well, we'll get in on that. It's got to be kind of uh, One week. <laughs> sad and ironic that uh, you're, you're so far away from home and uh, the film, uh, the show you're doing takes place in your home, essentially. Yeah. Joe. Yes. You're 18. Yes. What's going on? I just wanted to make a comment about the newsies. Uh oh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I was at a party last year and uh someone popped it in and it was kinda like the thing like one of those things where you don't want to admit you liked it. <laughs> Everyone knew the words. It was really weird. Oh, see, yeah, because yeah, you're, you're singing along you're with it. right in that wheelhouse. You're eighteen. Yeah. Uh that would have made ago. you about ten. Yeah. And uh you went and saw the yeah, Disney movie at ten. Yeah. Perfect. That was a great movie. I wanted to be one of those newsies. Yeah. I'm I'm working on a musical uh, about guys who sell uh, comic books and get prizes called Gritties. 
It might work. And that's what I love about Drew. So he's uh, stone cold. I never heard of the magazine called Grit that kids sell and they win prizes. Mm-hmm. No. No. No, no. Uh, what the hell's on with me? What, what is going on with me? Mike, Engineer Mike, you, you know the magazine Grit. Back you, of every comic book I ever read. Thank you very much. Very well known? That and selling seeds, I think, was the other option. Never heard of Grit? I never owned a comic book. No, I never read a comic book either, but it was, I, I, always, I always knew there was this magazine you could sell. It was called Grit. But they didn't pay you. It was a magazine for kids, and you could win prizes, and, and you selling. could turn them in for prizes. Yeah. Uh. Sold a bunch of these uh, subscriptions. You'd get one of those uh, airplanes on the tether. Oh. You know what I'm saying? Is this yeah. like one of those, like the seahorses or the sea... Remember those things? Uh, sea monkeys. Sea monkeys, yeah. yeah. Emily? Yeah. Drew, what happened to you that you never heard of anything? How does that work? That's, that's, that was raising a bubble. <laughs> yeah, I don't life. think it was a bubble. You got around. I think someone just put like a sparklets bottle on your head. <laughs> Emily? What? All right, what's going on with you? Oh, no, I just wanted to um, embellish further on the uh, whole Newsies subject. Oh, um, I just wanted to tell Michael what a huge Newsies fan I am, and uh, like the guy that just called, know all the words to the music, um, kind of a guilty pleasure, but um, it's a really great movie, and like even though I'm a chick and everything, I totally sing, wanted to be a Newsies. So. Sing, sing yeah. one, of the, one of the numbers. What's that? Sing one of the, the yeah, big I'll hits. sing it with you. Oh, God, you don't want to hear me sing. Yeah, well, I'd, well, let's I'd sing like it. to see, uh, hear you and Michael do a little Which duet. Do it. I forgot what they were, so you have to help me out. Oh God, you don't. You really don't want to hear me say. Come on, come on, come on Emily. I'm like gonna ruin the whole movie. Come on, come on. Here's Which, the music. What is that? What is With a big, me. big pivotal scene in the movie? Well, there's, there's this one. Uh, they're like in this res, uh, this little like diner kind of thing, and oh, they're yeah. mm-hmm. It's like, look at me, I'm the king in New York. <laughs> it's really cute. King and in New York, yeah. You know that number? I remember that there's a tap dance section yeah, of it. Yeah, there's a big tap yeah, dance Yeah, and they shot everybody from the waist down and then me from the waist up. Oh, okay. Because <laughs> I couldn't tap dance. See, I'm going to see. I don't want to ruin, like, the whole movie because it's really good. I don't want to ruin it by, you know. With Knowing too much about it. Lack of sin. Uh, yeah, let's not give it away. It's a good. Yeah, yeah, just go run it. Yeah, it's really good. But... I'm gonna. Is it out on Laserdisc? Because I want to see the director's cut. <laughs> I, I don't know about that, but um, it's really good. So I just wanted to say it's like it's really good, and it's got really hot guys in it too. So oh. yeah, there you go. I saw Hearts of Newsies, which was a uh, documentary on the making of Newsies, but I never actually saw the film itself. Drew, there's another uh, reference that slide right past my partner, yeah. Jenny. Yeah. Hearts of Darkness. You ever uh, hear about that? No. What is it? That? What was it? Documentary about the what? Apocalypse Now. Ah, thank you, Drew. Thank you, Michael. Jenny, and, and Anna, when will you learn yeah. that it has anything to do with pop culture? You, you, you forget it. Forget it. Hey, Drew, Grit more Magazine like, more was in its, to... <laughs> in its heyday when you yeah. were 11 years old. I'm more likely to be able to tell you about Drew, medieval you monasteries. Med- you were not in med school in 1969, were you? No. All right, I was busy, ben. though, still even that. You're busy. Busy doing nothing. Jenny? Yeah? What's up with you? Um, I'm not really sure. I've had this thing in the past year or two where I've just had the desire to completely isolate myself from people. I don't want to talk to people. I don't want them to touch me. I'll only associate with certain friends of mine anymore. What do you think that's about, Jenny? What? What do you think that's about? I don't know. Um, it probably has something to do with... I think my mom's kind of an alcoholic. She just kicked like a year ago. Mm. But she, um was with a boyfriend that abused her pretty badly, but she was codependent, so she kept going back with him. Did he do anything to you? Mm, no, but I stepped between him when he was about to snap her a couple of times. Mm. I was about five. Oh, mm-hmm. five? Mm-hmm. Oh, boy. How's your mom doing now? Oh, uh, she's much better. I'm going to go live with her in about a year. I live with my dad right now, but... Did she suggest you go to Al-Anon or al at one point, we discussed it, but I never really got a chance to. Jenny, really, you ought to go. It's designed specifically for people who have been through exactly what you've been through, or the kinds of, of problems you've been through. Does your dad do any drinking? No, not. He's got, like, something where he can't drink alcohol, something called fibromyalgia. No, I Something where it's like, yeah, all tense. yeah but the, dad's got something going on too, though. Really? Yeah. Why? And he, he's, he's kind of, I don't know, verbally abusive. Yeah, like, okay. Well, how do you get fibromyalgia? 
Mm, it's primarily, as my intense. yeah, my opinion, it's, it's a sleep disorder and or manifestation of depression. Oh, so uh, it's one of the sort of made up ones. Not really, because it's a real syndrome, and it can be separate from that. I, I've never seen a fibromyalgia case that didn't have a a severe sleep disorder associated with it. And mm-hmm. and most commonly, the sleep disorder is from some sort of mood disorder. Right. What happened? Do you, do they get tense stuff. Mm-hmm. No, they get muscle pain. They get pain all over their body. It's awful. So, Jenny, so you, it, it's no picnic living in with your dad. No. Yeah. And uh, you're going to move back in with your mom. Yeah. And your mom's been sober for a year. Yeah. And, and how's her attitude? Is she apologetic about the past? Um, she says she's sorry. She's had to put, she put me through all of this when I was a kid. And basically, she's not codependent anymore. She's finally living on her own. She has a steady job. All right. But, but, Jenny, you've been through a lot. And you've got to do something in order to reverse the... The, the sort of road you're on and alateen is an easy place to start it, at least it will give you an opportunity to begin developing connections with people which is really the first and actually the essential piece of people healing from this sort of thing and if you can really do some step work and uh, establish a more genuine intimate contact in the context of recovery and alateen this whole thing may settle down we'll john say. yes john you're 25 what's happening not much well, my wife lost her sex drive. We just had a newborn baby here last month. and Is she depressed? Yeah, yeah. Actually, I am. No, she. Oh, she? Well, she hasn't been quite the same since the pregnancy. No. Has she been evaluated for that? I mean, any, any significant mood drop in a, within a year of pregnancy? I mean, people, yeah. women can have these profound depressions in the first year after delivery. Why? What is that? It's postpartum depression. That's yeah. the, the brain reacts to the biological changes of pregnancy. Yeah. Basically, my sister was like, right? She How'd she do? Well, you have, you you, you said this. Yeah, my family, going, yeah. yeah. She, uh, it was pretty rough. I mean, did uh, she get psychotic or anything? No, it it just developed into a thing between her and my parents, and she really wouldn't speak to them for a while, and uh, just went through a big depression. It lasted yeah. about a year. She, How she, long? She's ago? getting a lot better right now. When did she have the child, John? She had it last month. Month? Okay. One month ago? Yes. Okay. John, I mean, it says eight months on the board here, but yeah, well, give her a little, yeah, yeah, give her a break. Her a break. I, I mean, just the stress of being mom is so profound that, that there's not a lot of energy left to uh, focus on you. And your job is to be a supportive husband and to help her with the child rearing. She go C section. No, no. Okay. And, well, she's got an excuse. Give her a couple and, weeks. Yeah. Yeah. And it's it's common, if not normal, to have a drop in sex drive at least for up to six months after delivery. And if there's a depression associated with that, too, then there's going to be a profound drop in libido. And it, 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 depression needs to be evaluated at least and maybe treated. Hey, Drew. No. Is there something wrong with me, or am I just old school, when I say, I don't really want to be in the room when the kid's coming out? I want to be like Fred McMurray. Handing out cigars, <laughs> you know, waiting room, like pacing. Have some other guy come up, you know, tells me he's already got four. <laughs> look through the glass. Yeah, that's yeah, look, right that, that, that one's mine. Yeah, is that, is there something wrong with me that that's the way I want it to be? There's something wrong with you, but it doesn't necessarily apply to this issue. It doesn't. <laughs> nah. I don't want to be in the room. You know that's what I mean? Fine. I don't want to see. It's pretty intense. I, that's what, that's what I'm, that's what I'm thinking. Yeah. I, I haven't, yeah. <laughs> Why do I have to be there? I sort of have a, uh, one of my kids coming out, I just have this emblazoned image. Uh, that, that's right. I, just, woof, my, I don't need anyone to get out the wood burner and carve anything else into my brain. It's all full. <laughs> my my brain is like a, a cinder block wall that has so much graffiti on it, there's no more room for even a guy with like a gang with a ballpoint pen to get their insignia on there. And the last thing I need to do is see something coming out of my wife's crotch. Do, do you know what I mean? Yeah, I know exactly what you mean. All right. I'm I'm glad I was there, but if you didn't, hey, you are? If you're not into it. That's fine. That's just hanging out in the waiting room, that's right? Fine. That's fine. Yeah. Well, your wife might be happy about that, but yeah, but she she can get over that. You know, you know what's weird. You know what's weird. It's like um, people that have babies, and not only is the guy in there, but he's helping out. You know, he's he's grabbing stuff and clipping stuff, and then. There's other weird family members hanging around, you know, like an uncle or a brother-in-law or something is in there with a video camera. Yeah, that's that, weird. I find that, that that's offensive. I find it a little yeah. bizarre. Yeah. I, I don't want, like, uh, my cousin Greg yeah. hanging out there looking at my wife and the kid popping out. Yeah. I, I don't want the, the film crew in yeah. there. It, it all feels sort of uh, Intrusive. staged yeah. and bizarre to yeah. me. Yeah, yeah, I'm with you on that. Well, yeah. with the film crew thing, I mean, what, are you going to watch it? 
over uh, Easter. Yeah, show it to the kid when he's seven. Oh, yeah, look. Look at you being born. Oh, oh, oh. Yeah, I mean, the kid's going to freak out. Yeah. I mean, would you really want to see no. you coming out? No. I, I can figure what I... Oh, I'm, I'm not going to wink at the camera or anything. I'm just a ball of mush with the goo all over me. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Not doing anything. No. Okay. All right. <laughs> Good. So we're, we're I'm all right with that then, right? John. Yeah. You're 28. Right. What's going on? Uh, well, I've recently been uh, experimenting with drugs, and, um, well, I noticed, like, the next day, my tongue sometimes, like, turns totally white. Is it, I don't is understand it, what's going on. Does it burn when you drink hot liquids and that sort of thing? Uh, my whole mouth is pretty sensitive. Yeah. yeah it's like... I, I, I've not seen any medical literature on this, but I'm convinced that people get, uh, thrush, the yeast infections in their mouth, particularly when they drink a lot. And I, I've seen this over and over and over again and I, I, in my patients, and yet none of them, well, unless they have HIV or something else, it's relatively uncommon to need treatment. It tends to go away very, very quickly by itself. Thrush is a yeast infection yeah. in your mouth? Yeah. In your mouth. Yeah. And it, you get it, it goes from... goes away like a day or two later. Yeah, it goes away a day or two later, exactly. Is, it, is that from drinking, did you say? Drinking is the one where place I see it most commonly. It's basically from... I think from an alteration of the immune system caused by these drugs. The immune doesn't work, yeah. the system doesn't work right, yeast overgrows in the mouth, and that's it. I think it, it seems to happen when I do ecstasy. Well, so be it. Whatever. Yeah. Uh, that's one of the more dangerous drugs you can do. So. That's it, my other question is that, because I've been kind of trying out just about everything lately, mm-hmm. and like, I don't know, I'm trying to figure out which is, what's, what stuff is more dangerous than other stuff. <laughs> like, ecstasy, like, what are the dangers in that, and, and also, like, what are your thoughts on GHB? Yeah. I, you know, I'm not going <laughs> to. I'm not going to endorse on one drug over the other, but GHB, the danger of the GHB are, is it's very difficult to titrate the dose. You can go from intoxicated to coma and seizure with a very, very sort of nominal change in, in nominal uh, uh, How much? Uh, intake. Yeah, uh, it's very hard to, to dose it. Uh, ecstasy, the more we learn about that drug, the more dangerous it appears. It, it seems to have neurotoxic qualities to it. In addition to causing disorganization of thought and paranoia, I've seen some very bizarre neurologic syndrome trauma where people get sort of locked in and Parkinsonian and they can't move their eyes, they can't move anything. I've also seen very strange behavioral problems. One of the reasons that ecstasy goes through these sort of patterns of, of uh, popularity, it goes, it goes about every four to six years, it comes back on popularity because it takes about four years for people to see crap happen to their peers. Yeah. Once they see enough bad stuff happen, they, they decide it's a bad drug. Another group of young people come in who haven't seen that. Well, all I know is I uh, I did half a, I don't know, tab or whatever of ecstasy like uh, six years ago, and I couldn't go to bed. And I was going insane. I was in Las Vegas, and a friend of mine spit coffee in my face, and I thought, uh, you know what, this is too much. Hmm. i got to just mellow out with a beer. Well, what about, like, have you ever heard of this trail mix where it's a mixture of drugs? Mm, tell me about it. It's uh, got K, ketamine, um, ecstasy, and uh, crystal in it. Now, that's good. That one's fine. Drew, you endorse that, don't you? Wow. Let's do one of Drew's fantasy answers. Uh, yes. Uh, in fact, uh, Drew, is trail it? mix is good for you. I mean, that, why else would they call it trail mix? It's nutritious and uh, enhances well, your... Good, but... Take it when you're hiking, Jeff. Yes, of course. And, uh, and maybe there's a new mix called Gorp coming out that will uh, be especially uh, useful for to enhance neurochemistry. Um, <laughs> Gorp. It's got carob in it. <laughs> I'm just trying to make cultural references that you might appreciate. All right. Hey, John. Hey, ketamine is a dangerous drug, too. I, I, I've treated a couple of ketamine apps. Addicts, believe it or not, it's a kind of uncommon. But ketamine is is a is an anesthetic that has uh, dissociative properties to it. People claim they have out of body experiences and all kinds of weird stuff. Um, these uh, drugs well, are profoundly to dangerous. Right, quiet down over there, John. Yeah, you're 28. You're uh-huh. well past the experimental phase of your life. So why don't you I just did, mellow I just out? I started doing it. It's actually making me feel like a kid again. Actually, I I know, but I'm a kind of retarded kid, right? Um, no, I'm Ivy League graduate. My life's in order otherwise. Okay. There will be some serious consequences. Is there alcoholism in your family? No, no, wait a minute. Alcoholism in your family, John? What's that? Is there alcoholism in your family? No, I was raised Mormon. No alcohol in the house at all. Mormons that's, actually that's have a, a rather that. high uh, biological tendency towards addiction. I've treated a number of Mormons, and uh, it's the young Mormons who get out of Utah that the yeah. disease explodes very often. I'm going to the dentist tomorrow to get my nitrous. <laughs> oh, great. Yeah, I'm getting a uh, cleaning. You know, the dentist, uh, the dentist uh, secretary called me today, and they always, uh, they always give me. <laughs> I don't know what it is about uh, dealing with the. Uh, administration, the staff at the dentist's office that makes you feel like you're in the fifth grade. I was like, she called and left about five messages, so I finally called her back. I was like, oh, Adam, we haven't heard from you uh, in a while. We thought something had happened. Yeah, okay. 
Well, you know, we've missed you. Okay. And all of a sudden, all of a sudden, I'm like, I'm wearing a sailor suit and I'm licking a huge lollipop. Have you been flossing? Uh, yeah. Yeah. I mean, I. Uh, Did you get a reminder card? Uh, yeah. Yeah. The reminder cards, there's got a picture of Snoopy on it, yeah. too, or something. Then they, is there any adult dentistry out there? You have to demonstrate to her. Flossing. How have you been okay. flossing? Oh, we'll Show me. We'll see if you've been flossing. And then they get in there and they go, you haven't been flossing. As a matter of fact, I had one of the more uh, humiliating experiences in my life last time I was at the dentist. They asked me if I was chewing tobacco. Oh. <laughs> Which, for a guy who doesn't chew tobacco, I think <laughs> that's offensive. Even if you are chewing a tobacco, you should be mildly offended by that. But if you're not dipping and they ask you if you're dipping, it's like... And then I went... So I knew it was bad because she goes, you... uh you know, they pull back from your mouth, they got a little puzzled look on their face. Herb, come in here, would you please? Yeah. And there's a little like, conversation in the hall, and then they come back in. Uh, you chew tobacco? Mm, no. Oh, um, do you suck on mints or candy uh, excessively? Why, is my breath just that minty fresh? Do you want to compliment me? Come on out and say, uh, no, no, it's, no, it's, it's, it's nothing. Well, um, <clears throat> doctor? <laughs> like, oh, Christ. But anyway, so she gave me the whole uh, guilt thing about not calling her back. But for Christ's sake, they should be, they should be ready for that. They're dentists. So I'm going in there tomorrow. I'm getting a cleaning, allegedly. And uh, I just hope I get the pina colada, Drew. Because oh, you know, yes. you know yeah, that, you that, that pina colada pumice, yeah. that uh, sand that uh, they spray with a little <laughs> coconut juice. Yeah, you close your eyes, you're, in, you're on some uh, South Pacific island. You really are. You can hear like gulls flying overhead, feel the sun on your face. You, you really you drift right away with that pina colada. I think that was a nitrous that did that to you. Nate? Yeah. You're 18. Nate? Is that oh, it, Nate? I guess that's it. Wow. And he started off so, uh, so he was so promising, Nate. Yeah, All right. All right. What the hell? Is that, Nate's not the guy I put on hold an hour ago, is yeah. he? Jake? Yeah. You're 16. Hi. Hi. Um, I just, I, it's really weird. I mean, I can't explain it really well, but whenever I get into, like, I meet a girl or something, I just, you know, I just kind of turn around or, I don't, you know, I don't. I don't go for it. And I don't open myself up. I, I'm scared, or I don't know. Well, that's, uh, well, that's sort of normal. age appropriate. Jake. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But there are th there are social phobias. Where this becomes a you know, sort of an entrenched way of. Have you, you ever know, had a date? Yeah, yeah. I mean, a few times. But... All right, you're fine then. Yeah, are, you, are you a virgin? Yeah. It's a scary prospect at 16, the whole the whole interpersonal world, and it takes yeah. a while to get into it. How the, how does that work? Where uh, I mean, uh, how do some guys just have that? You know, I mean, they're friends of yours. You had and no problem. Just talk up, walk up to girls, start chatting her up, go out with her, get a phone number, whatever. Yeah. And then there was uh, those guys that were just paralyzed. Couldn't yeah. do anything right. Yeah. And and uh, I remember being 16 and being kind of paralyzed and, like, trying to talk myself out of it. Look, you're going to look back on this. You're going to laugh. It's no big deal in the big scheme of things. Just walk over there. Who cares? It's, if she dumps you, what's the worst that could happen? It's mostly, Wouldn't do it. It's mostly one's sense of oneself. A lot of young kids I do not have a complete sense of themselves and so they have no they have no capacity to tolerate the challenges of going into these novel environments. The, the brain just won't take it. It just it just has no coping mechanisms to manage it. So you have to kind of inch your way in and develop a strategy of comfort with it. Stupid. Yeah. yeah. Well, did you have uh, Wavos when you were uh, 16? Um... I mean, you had that, uh, well, had that bit. Newsies just, momentum behind yeah. you. <laughs> <laughs> newsies, and then, you know, I had no problems after that. Uh, <laughs> I just... Could you yeah, do it? I, yeah, I, I think uh, I was just uh, a bit shy, but uh, that helped a little bit, you know, in that I, I, I don't think being extremely forward and... and I've Aggressive. Never, I've never used a pickup line on anybody. Mm -hmm. Right. Um, and so, and I've never felt like I've been on a date per se, uh, yeah, I, in a I, traditional sense. I think if I had had, you know, one victory out of the first, let's say, 150 attempts, I would have had a little more confidence. But uh, the fact that... <laughs> hey, it is the Love Line. I'm Adam Carolla. He is Dr. Drew. Understand that order, Judy? Adam Carolla. And Dr. your sidekick, Dr. Drew. Dr. Drew. That is right. My faithful companion. Dr. Drew, like a... Uh, 
Mm, like the horse. Not even Tonto, but like the horse that the, the Lone Ranger rode on. You are my teacher. There you go. Judy Muller is here. She is an ABC News correspondent. They're doing a story uh, for Good Morning America on uh, a day in the life of Dr. Drew. Well, I... Sort of. Yeah. You, you've and been about with the him? show, about what you guys are doing. It's a little oh, different. it's all right. I don't, I don't mind you doing a That's story on it. That's about you, too, Adam. Hey. <laughs> Soften him up. Yeah, yeah. it's really working. about Play me. Go. Uh, you've been with him all day? No, no. I haven't, actually. The Scott Cruise has. Been. Scott's been with us since the morning. Camera crew's been following the room. Following the room. I took a oh. break, a long break. Okay. I mean... Somebody's been ABC with him. News has been with him. A lot of the day. At least that's lot six of hours a day. Or really? Yeah. And how did how did that work? They just took pictures. There's that's Scott. He was falling around and okay. People don't even know who Scott that's is. The cameraman over there. Okay, but he was following me around as I went to my office and went to. You got up in the morning. You you left your house. Was there a crew took, there? Took my kids to school. Came to my office. Started seeing patients. Where where did the crew and, and come they in? They showed my. They showed up about nine o'clock at the office. At the office. Followed did, me around. Okay. Took some patients. Okay. Then they came over to Los Angeles, and then Judy was there and did an interview and uh, right. Followed me around there a little bit. And, right. Uh, I had some other stuff I had to do in the middle of the day, and they came back later in the afternoon and followed me around some more. Drew uh, okay. made a uh, pit stop at the orphanage to work with the retarded kids. Right. <laughs> right. No. Then off to the gym. No. 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 All right, so you did your rounds at the hospital. Usual day, yeah. And, uh, Judy, you were assigned this, this I project? I was actually assigned this project. I had no idea who you were two days ago. Really? Right. But, but you never... Look at my age, you know, why would I... And I tuned in, I watched your MTV show, and mm. thought it was fun, and then been listening tonight. Mm. And I came in thinking, you know, I'm a pretty tolerant, open-minded person, and in the last two hours I've turn into the church lady mm. like before mm. no yeah. it's it's fascinating because you've got all these kids calling in who had no place mm -hmm. to call in oh, before i know and and let me uh let me say a couple of things about uh my um sidekick uh, dr uh let's let's drew yes thank you uh i i i, I hear about all these uh folks getting deals you know so and so is getting a daytime talk show this other yenta is getting a daytime talk show these fakes these phonies these imposters these people who tell people one way to live and then go off and lead a completely different life 100 marriages and 500 facelifts later they're telling you how to live your life drew is the, the genuine article He's boring as hell, but he's real. What you see is what you get, and you have a guy who's completely committed. I mean, you have a guy who did this program for 10 years for free. I understand that. Let and why? It I, I, it amazes me that Hollywood is not banging down this guy's door to get him a show. I, it, 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 it irks me that we don't appreciate that more in this culture. Well, in a way... It's a little like Leopold and Loeb. You don't really work well alone. I think it's the dynamic of the two, don't you think? That you kind of get him in the tent, and he slips in that medical advice, but all alone, maybe either one of you would be uh, not as effective. Thank you for uh, <laughs> using uh, America's First Thrill Killers right. uh, as, no. as an example. Um, you know what I mean. Quite true. It's Leopold and Loeb uh, killed some kid just to watch him die about 80 years ago. Nice. <laughs> not appropriate. All right, but I, I, know, I know what you're saying, but... For Christ's sake, all these other screwballs that are doing these horrible radio shows and giving out their half-baked uh, advice. Meanwhile, there's uh, pictures of them uh, spread eagle popping up all over the Internet. They all get millions of dollars in, in radio shows, and they, they can't hand contracts to them fast enough. This guy, Drew, should be the center of attention. He really should. Here's a guy who practices what he preaches. And, and, and I, I know it sounds like I'm sounding off on you guys, but here you are. So good. I'm glad. Uh, I'm glad people woke up to that. Oh, thank you. And and uh, furthermore, and then we'll go on to the calls. You're embarrassing me. Drew talks to the people who need a talking to. All these other people are talking to people. It's like, um, you know, they're having problems because they're in their forties and uh, they threw their hip out playing uh, golf last weekend, and their husband wants to build ships in a bottle in the basement, and now uh, with the hot flashes kicking in, she doesn't know about her sexuality. Who cares about that? This is not a dangerous part of society. I mean, if some 52-year-old chick doesn't get it as much as she wants, 
it's her problem, but it's not a society's problem. But it's a big problem, Adam. It is not a problem. And Drew, and I know you're being sarcastic, Drew deals with the future problems of this country, which is 14, 15, 16-year-olds who are screwed up, who are strung out, who are pregnant, and who are going to affect all of us. Thank you. Mahalo. God forbid you say anything nice about me when I'm not in the room. Please. Kyle? Yeah? You're 15. Yep. Um, uh, my problem is I have uh, a growth on the back of my ear after getting it pierced. Yeah, that's called a keloid. It's okay. A, it's a scar. Uh, was it from an infection or? Uh, no, it's just some. Are you dark skinned? Um, no. Dark skinned people tend to form these more readily than light skinned, but it's a scar. It's. it's you put a you put a, a spear through some part of your body. It has to scar to heal. And uh, if you're prone to forming keloids, these are just sort of abnormal scar growths. Okay. And you can talk to your doctor about it. Sometimes they can be cut out, but that oftentimes creates another keloid. Or they can put steroids in it they're, sometimes. They're so. sort of uh, raised scars. Yeah, or big fat scars. Do okay. You, do you have scars anywhere else on your body? Yeah, I got a bunch of them. You do. The other ones yeah. puff up like that. Um, some of them do, and yeah. some of them don't. Okay, you're you're a keloid former. Okay. And uh, there are certain parts of your body that are more prone to keloids than others. Why are dark-skinned people more prone to keloids? I don't think anybody knows the answer to that. Okay. But African-Americans particularly keloid. Yeah. Hey, um, I have another question. Uh, will it happen uh, every time I get my ear pierced? Probably. Okay. All right, okay. so you should keep doing it, right? Yeah. I'll and don't pierce it. other parts of your body, too. It'll happen there. Okay. Yeah. All right, Kyle. All right. All right. Talk to, uh, talk to great start. Eric. Yeah. You're 21. Yeah. You're on with Judy Muller. She's an ABC News correspondent. Okay. Hi, Judy. Hi, Eric. Uh, well, Adam, first I wanted to say that you probably congratulate me because me and my girlfriend have been going out for five years now, and she isn't pregnant yet. Yeah. Great. Oof. But what well, my question is... This is a love line record. <laughs> yeah. Well, actually, because the reason is because I'm, I'm proposing to her next month. Congratulations. Uh, but what I want to find out, Dr. Drew, is about the pill prevent. Right. Is, do you know if it's ever going to come out where it's not prescription? It's in the state of Washington. It is over the counter. And in parts of Oregon, they're testing it that way. And it, it has been a resounding success in Washington State. How, why uh, why I, even test it? What is there to test? I don't know. I don't know why they're yeah. test marketing. Is and the I, word out on this yeah. drug? Does, do all these kids know about it? Well, we're, we're doing our best to yeah. get it out there. And uh, um, they seem to be much more than, say, a year ago. Uh, and it's uh, we could do away with abortion with this pill. We really could. Yeah, why why are we not interested in that? I mean, you're you're in the news. Do you do you report any of this stuff? We is have reported a... on this drug, but I think that there is a misconception about it. People think it's an anti-abortion drug. The anti-abortion yeah. crowd, it, it, in you fact, think it's an abortion believes, pill. It, believes it's an abortion pill. But but right. the science is. Uh, I really spent my day looking at this very carefully, and the science is equivocal at at most. And if you read it the way I read it. It's clear that it's an ovulation suppressor. And as I read the literature, if you don't take the pill before you ovulate, you get pregnant. That's what happens. That's why it's only 70% effective. And it suppresses the LH surge, pre pre prevents ovulation. You've got, if you get it in the first day, you're more likely to have an effective use of the, of the morning after please, pill. What are you aborting at that at that? You know, three days into it. But, anyway, but, but, let's just say technically, for the sake of argument, because I, I, uh, I'm telling you, Judy, it is about people that like to complain. It's not about people that are interested in helping. If these people wanted to help, they go down to the orphanage, adopt somebody, and then feed the homeless. They want to complain. Do you think people will stop using birth control if they think well, that's one of, out there? That is one of the concerns about it, and, the, and uh, part of the educational process is letting them know that it is not a substitute for contraception. It is for when contraception fails or rape or some some unanticipated sexual encounter occurs. As physicians, we've been using this thing for years, and there's never been any hue and cry about it. Emergency room doctors use it every time they see a rape victim. Eric, why are you interested in this? Uh -oh, second. Eric? Yeah. Why are you interested in this? Well, basically as a backup. For what? Well, just in case. For what are you using now? Uh, well, she's on the pill, and then I also use... Like, okay, if you're on the pill, you're on the pill. That's it. Yeah. Well, yeah, but, I mean, that's only, what, 99%? 99.99. 99.94. Dr. What, what my thing is, what about the point zero zero one? Yeah, but that when you're, you can't use a morning-after pill when you're already on a hormonal 
Oh, really? No. The more you have to build works for people that are not taking anything. Oh. Listen, well, what about a meteor hitting your apartment? Yeah. No, no you're, you're doing fine. You're doing Why don't you wear a crash helmet when you drive your car? Well, see, the, the only thing that gets me is the state of California has this whole, you know, ad campaign about this, and then yet it's not over the counter. And it just, it bugs me because you think it'd be more readily available. Uh, it may be someday. Yeah, I mean, what it ad campaign? Do yeah, we, we have. haven't seen it. We've been looking for the I ad mean, campaign. I yeah, mean, well, you know, you've seen on TV and the public service announcements, and all we that. haven't seen one. No, we hear public service announcements about uh, Smokey the goddamn bear telling you to piss on your fire, and uh, when you leave your campsite, and airplane. McGruff explaining to you the uh, tragedy of uh, laptop computer theft in airport terminals, and uh, being pickpocketed, and then the heart the heartbreak of airplane turbulence. These are the PSA we hear in this dump night after night. Uh, and, and as well, no, uh, we all know somebody who's been killed uh, via airplane turbulence or uh, because they caught on fire in the forest. Or did, they had I pulled an article stolen. from the Annals of Internal Medicine, which was about uh, sort of a new discussion of secondhand smoke and its effect on the lining of the vascular system. And at the conclusion of that article, they, they uh, wanted to point out that it could be responsible for as many as five deaths a year. Right. Remember that? Right. And yet a half a million unwanted pregnancies occur every year, mostly to teenagers in this country. Listen, uh, anyone who reads, uh, what is it, the uh, new issue of uh, L.A. Magazine that Drew and I were in the back page on, did you see that? No. Somebody show me that. Yeah. That where I got uh, had that uh, crazy Asian guy put me in the slippers oh, yes. and uh, the sweater. <laughs> Oh, and it said uh, stylist. I don't know what he called him, like uh, Pachinko Ball or something. I can't remember what the guy's name was, right. but uh, this guy didn't know anything. He stuffed me into some ill-fitting shoes and had me sit there like an idiot. But under my uh, what was hot and what was not, uh, what was not was secondhand smoke, but they misquoted me as, as, as if I was saying secondhand smoke is out. Uh, that, that was out, not the discussion on secondhand uh, smoke. Listen, I'm going to look right in the camera. We have a, a news crew here. I want this to make the air. Stop all this goddamn discussion on secondhand smoke. Handful of people die each year from it. Who cares? Knock it off. We're, we're, we're taking every penny we have of public service money, and we're channeling it into this awareness campaign for secondhand smoke. That's all I hear about is secondhand smoke. And kids smoke. are rebelling against that and smoking more. Ooh. In the meantime, they're getting pregnant no, and abusing their kids. Nobody dies of secondhand smoke. Stop it. Move on to bigger and better things. When they can pass uh, 11 people a year nationally, then we can talk. Until then, we have more people dying being hit by lightning than secondhand smoke and uh, eaten by sharks for Christ. Are still there? No, always no, coming. No, we got to We got to go. We do. Yeah. Oh, Jesus, Drew. Why didn't you say so? Let's go to break. Paul. Yeah. You're 23. Yeah. You're uh, two years sober. Yeah. Could his meth habit have caused a drop in his sex drive? That's what you want to know. Well, yeah. That was okay. Nice. All right. Hold on. Hold on, hold on. We'll take a little break. Judy Muller's here. She's a correspondent from ABC News. Good morning, America. They're doing a, a piece on my, uh, well, my trusty sidekick, my right-hand man, uh, oh, Dr. Like Drew. I'm trusty now. Nice to, uh, yeah. nice to see him getting his props every once in a while. See the kid coming up a little bit in the world. All right, Drew, why don't you grab me a cup of coffee? I'll talk <laughs> to uh, Judy, and we'll be back after this. Point one KFMA. We is back. Judy Muller is here tonight. She is from uh, ABC News. She's a correspondent. She uh, is doing a piece on uh, Good Morning America or for Good Morning when America. Is that be? Friday. Friday. I hope. And uh, Dr. Drew. What times that show come on? It's on from seven to nine oh. across the country. Yeah, that's uh, that's early. <laughs> ABC News. Wait a minute. Is Shelby uh, Coffee working right. for mm -hmm. uh, ABC News? We've got him now. Maybe that's how we, this happened. Is he a pal? Yeah. He's a friend of mine. You don't like oh. Drew. Oh. Please. Don't try to <laughs> horn in on my uh, relationship okay. with the big wigs. Oh. Yeah, tell Shelby uh, we'll uh, do a little brunch when I come out to uh, NY next time. <laughs> Ready to move forward here, Drew? Let's go. Paul? Yeah. You're 23. Yeah. What's going on? Um, I started using um, using crank. I started smoking crank when I was uh, 15. Oh, right, right. When you stopped, how long ago? Uh, two years ago. You say you were smoking it? Yes. So you wow. smoke speed for six years. Yeah. Did I mean, you get Did you get real psychotic? Huh? Did Excuse you get me? Did you get real paranoid towards the end? Oh, oh, definitely. I, I've been institutionalized. I was institutionalized in a mental institute. Did you get violent? 
Um, yes. Which is this a typical? I, mean, I, I was um, in addition. You know, I was running running with. Uh, um, with street gangs and stuff like but it's that. It's a typical speed story. Is uh, people yeah. get real paranoid and extremely violent. This yeah, is, uh, awful. Definitely. Guy. I mean, I, w- I was upwards of uh, upwards of uh, four grams a day. Did you start hallucinating? Wow. Did you hallucinate at one point? Oh, oh yeah, definitely. I, I mean, I had some uh, bizarre um, paranoid delusions of. What'd you believe? <laughs> everything from. Uh, um, I remember one night I I thought that uh, through was funny. Um, you know, pe- you know, oh. uh, people were listening to me through the radio, and right. um, hey, listen, let me tell you something, Drew. Yeah, four grams—that's uh, a, that's a lot. Because the, the thing about crank is uh, a line of cocaine, which will—I uh, don't know—you know, the size of uh, I don't know an earthworm. I'll say yeah. uh, that that'll hold you over for I don't know twenty minutes or something. But if you do that much speed, you're going for two days. Oof. See, I, was, I mean, you're not. You, you listen, if if I drew you a line of speed that was just it looked like a small worm strung out, and and uh, when I use that terminology, and you did it at seven o'clock in the evening, at uh, four in the morning, you'd still be racing. Here's one of the interesting things about the paranoia is that go from speed versus cocaine. With speed, you get preoccupied with the people in your life, your family, your friends. They're all plotting to do something to you, right? Right, Paul. Exactly, definitely. And when you do cocaine. The, the cocaine addicts never are concerned about the family members. They're concerned with uniformed officers. They always see SWAT teams and policemen and army guys outside their house. And it's interesting when, when the, the speed addicts will call the police to save them from their grandmother. And if somebody's a coca- cocaine addict in the house, the police arrive and they go running out the back door because the police are coming there for them as far as they're concerned. Yeah. It's an interest, and nobody knows why that biological difference occurs. But, Paul, your question was, could, the, could your low sex drive now be related to that speed history? Uh, are you depressed? Um, I, you know what, um, I would, um, I would probably say yes. Did you smoke a lot of pot too? No, I never smoked pot. Was, speed was your only drug. Um, primarily, yes. What was the other drugs? Um, uh, and I've heard, I actually, I've heard you comment on this about the a correlation, but um, acid. Yeah. Yeah, uh, so heavily for about a year. All right, I would be more apt to blame the LSD than the speed. Believe it or not, speed possibly could do this, but acid frequently does this and also causes long-term depressions. So it's time to get this looked into. This is a neurobiological problem, Paul, and uh, uh, check it out. They're gonna, he's gonna, be, he's gonna be treated. He's gonna need medication. Oh really? So, yeah. Just because of the acid part? The two together, but acid can do it by itself. I mean, it causes such bad mood problems that that screws with the libido. So, Judy, you ever drop any acid? No. Really? No, never did. You're gonna ask never, something. She was telling me never. she was tripping during the commercial. You interrupted her. No. And if I ran really? for office, I never what? ever inhale. Were you gonna say something? Yeah, I wanted to ask Paul uh, uh. why he called the show. Okay. Oh, oh wait a second. Wait, 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 Are you still there, Paul? Yes. Okay. Where are you calling from? Um, I'm com- I'm uh, calling from Pleasanton, California. Yeah, had to and kick you right out of that place. Yeah, yeah. I, I'm, Paul, I'm just curious. Why did you call this show with this question? Is there any place else you could take this question and trust the answer? <laughs> um, you know what? This is a funny thing. Um, in the last, um, in the um, within the last two years, I, you know, within um, getting out of uh, the drug rehab I was in originally, the first thing I did was I got in, involved with uh, counseling. I was well, well, speaking at Juvenile Hall, and I'm now actually a, a certified drug counselor. Um, and, and the information I've heard on Drew's show totally blows away anything, any other kind of literature, you know, even that I've been um, provided in school and stuff like that. Who, whose show, Paul? Uh, on, <laughs> on your guys' show. There you go. So All right, Paul. More credibility. Now, now this is now. Now I have a question. Um, yeah. One more question, because um, you know I started when I was 15, so yeah. everything, everything I've, I've experienced in my life from losing, you know, having sex for the first time, everything's always been un, under the influence of speed. And yeah. the whole thing about it is, it 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 doesn't feel the same now that I'm off of the speed. Yeah, I, I think the, a lot of this is a biological process, and I bet you it can be corrected. Uh, you're doing all the right stuff, stay with your program, keep being of service, but it's real common for people with this kind of history to need a little pharmacological and, and, help. And listen, maybe the drugs didn't screw him up as much as he thought. I mean, here's a 15-year-old who decides, yeah. uh, I'm going to get into speed, I'm going to make a full-time habit out of yeah. it for six, seven years. Yeah. So here's a guy who may have been on a collision course with depression anyway. Mm, yeah, huh? Well, there's a lot going on, but he's, he's managing just, that. Cut it right there. Don't <laughs> get Drew hemming and hawing over All right, let's go next call. wonderful um, uh, right. hypotheses. Here's uh, Molly, who's uh, 17, been on hold for 93 minutes, which is um, almost an hour, I think. <laughs> Molly? Hello. 
Hello? Hi. Thanks for hanging out. It probably means you have a bad question. Um, I don't know. Okay, well, me and my boyfriend have been together for 10 months, and he cheated on me about a month ago. And we broke up, and I decided to give him a second chance. And ever since then, we've been having a lot of problems. Um, he lies to me constantly about girls. and. When you say he cheated, what does that mean? He had sex with another girl. And he's how old? He's 19. And you're 17. Yeah. yeah. And, and he did this 10 months into the relationship? Yep. Have you had other boyfriends that, that treated on you? No. No. This is the first time. This is your first boyfriend? Well, I've had other boyfriends, but I lost my virginity to him. So. And, and so you took him back, yeah. and now you suspect he's cheating again. Yeah, because he's supposed to be in Las Vegas right now mm. with his mom for a week. Yeah. But his friend called me and told me that he's really in Louisiana. Well, Molly, why don't you get rid of this guy? I don't know. It's, it's time. every time why I Why does friend to... call you and tell you it's really in Louisiana? You know, we, we could get into whether or not she has something that predisposes her well, to be fair to him, Louisiana place. and Las Vegas is really the same place. Yeah, I mean, okay. be that as it may. It sounds the same, same anyway, yeah, yeah. of course. I, uh, I, but I Molly, Molly, th these, these relationships, this is one of the reasons that it's not a good idea to give up your virginity to somebody at, at a young age. It's that you get bonded in a way that is uh, more intense than it should be. Well, she's it's, 17. It's, that's it's, not it's young not, by today's that's standards. That's true, but, but it, the point is it, it bonded her up with this guy that she shouldn't be with, and it's one of these relationships that has taken forever to end. Yeah. They're hanging out together much longer than they should, and she needs to learn how to read that and conclude this relationship. Hey, this is the first time in history a guy said he was going to be in Vegas and didn't show up in Vegas. <laughs> you know what I mean? I mean, Utah, maybe. Do, wait, do you want to ask her your question? Oh. She asked these questions. Molly? Yeah, Molly, why do you call this show for this advice when you could just ask girlfriends? Or... Why do I call it? Yeah, why did you call these two guys to ask about your I boyfriend? don't know, because I don't know what to do. He's like totally, I don't know, he's like ruined my life. No, hey, goofball, why did you ask us, though? But why did you call these guys and stay on hold for 93 minutes? Do you... I don't know what to do anymore. I know, but I why them more than anybody else on the planet? Just don't talk to our them? listeners, really. It's really a bad <laughs> idea, isn't it? You, you can only communicate with them. <laughs> you, you show them fire. Sometimes they're scared. That'll get them in line. Other than that, uh, you have to you have to bang on a drum. Molly, do you understand Judy's question? Well, not really. I'm just curious about why, why you called this show. Why did I'm you go somewhere else to yeah, ask the question? I'm doing a story about this show. I don't and know, I wanna... because no, no one, I can't really talk to anyone about it because no one really tells me what to do. And I just thought I would call the show. Thank you for that ring endorsement. All right, Molly. Thanks, Molly. End this relationship. It's over, okay? All right. Uh, you don't let them ruin your life anymore. All right. You, you got to understand one thing about our, our callers and listeners. If you ever try to coax a compliment or a explanation for them out of anything, if you want them to do one thing, they, they will never it. do it. Yeah. There, yeah. First will be, it'll be confusion for the first half hour, and then it'll be uh, something that's sort of unfulfilling yeah. at the end of that. That's very, just very, not, that's right real fast. Oppositional, very oppositional. Adrian? Yes. You're 20? Yep. Why did you call this show? Why me and Drew? How come uh, you didn't talk to one of your buddies about whatever problem you're about to ask us? Because uh, I've listened to you guys for a long time. Yes. And, um, I see how you guys answer other people's questions, and I like, I mean, it feels comfortable. All right. Good. Thank you. Now we're out of time. <laughs> <laughs> wait, 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 Let me see wait, what's wait. going on. Girlfriend doesn't want to have any kind of sex. Should he stay with her or leave? How long have you been going out with her? Three years. And you've never had sex? Well, no, we've never had any uh, sexual intercourse. Yes. But uh, Not everything else. A year after we started dating, um, we had oral sex, and then um, oh, yeah. just now she just told me she doesn't want to okay. anymore. And she want to wait till she gets married? Yeah. And do you want to marry her? Yeah, I want to get out of school. Yeah, but so you got about three or four years of uh, <laughs> if you, care if you business? Want, if you want to marry her, then wait. Yeah, I don't know. Sense. You gotta, you gotta reach some kind. Listen, she's gotta come back with the oral sex. Let's say this uh, to Judy: You women, you cannot offer man oral sex for a year and then take it back. You, you understand? That's that's the that's that's hell. This poor uh, son of a bitch is living Certainly in can purgatory. Uh, can uh, shape behavior though. Yeah, well, I mean, don't do anything. Well, listen, you can like use a... it. You can take it away temporarily, like you hide a kid's toy in the top shelf of the closet for a couple hours, maybe a day, but you don't take it out in the backyard and bury it. The kid will kill himself. You cannot give a 20-year-old uh, oral sex and then take the oral sex back and tell him for the next few years he's on his own. No, that is torture. Very diabolical. Do Only a woman would come up with that. Yes, Not he does. He agree. agrees with everything I said. We'll be back. Oh, yeah. 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 Oh,